Hi guys, it's seven o'clock, so that means Aussie mail time. Okay, so let me just bring up your comments. If anybody's watching me at the moment, just give me a little shout out so I can make sure I'm seeing um, everyone's comments come up. Okay. Not seeing any comments. Do we have any comments yet? Oh, there we go. Perfect, Sue. Thank you very much. Hi, Hazel. How are we going, Diane? Fabulous. That all looks to be working. Great. Hey, Catherine, you made it. Marion. Hello, Annette. Hi, Ruth. How are you going? Okay, fabulous. Leanne, hi there. Hello, Trouble, how are you? Hey, Tracy. Daryl, how are you going? Hi, Wes. Beautiful. All right, looks like we've got contact. Shirley and Susie, hi there. Wonderful. Teresa and Bonnie. Hey, Bonnie. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I went and got it to cut off yesterday. Spent a few hours with the hairdresser. <laughs> Not quite as colourful as I normally get it, but um, yeah, I was way overdue. All right. Hey, Michael, how are you going? All right, well, we might make a start then since we've got quite a few people on. I will just switch this over to the other view and um, we'll get started. <clears throat> Could be just your um, Facebook feed, Ruth. Mine keeps stopping and starting too. Hopefully everything's okay. So how's it going for you, Chris? All right? Okay. I do have some dropped frames coming up. Anyway, we will run with it and do our best. All right, so I'll just whip this over and we can start talking about the weave. Okay, so I've chosen to do... Fire, well, it depends on your pronunciation here. We can call it fire worm, um, fire worms, fire virum. Depends how you want to pronounce it. Just so I don't keep tripping over myself, I'm just going to call it fire worm. Nice and easy. Okay, so I've done up quite a few pieces. Um, I actually quite enjoyed doing this way, so I got a little carried away. Um, this is a full Persian variant. It's not as tricky as it looks. So if you can do um, full version, oh, full version, full version. <laughs> Doing good, aren't I? <laughs> you should be fine. Okay, so 14 gauge, uh, this is the 14 gauge version in the 7 sixteenths uh, with the double rings. I've also done it in 16 gauge. I've got two 16 gauge versions for you today. This is the straight BA, which is 16 gauge 5 sixteenths, or we add a little bit of colour. This again is 16 gauge 5 sixteenths, but the colour rings are actually 14 gauge 5 sixteenths. Now I couldn't fit two in there, which is why there's only the one. So it does give it a slightly different look, but it adds that all important little bit of colour if, that, if that's what you want. Okay, and 18 gauge, I chose to do that in 7 mil. That's the straight BA version. And to add a little bit of colour to this one, this is 18 gauge 7, but the coloured rings are uh, 16 gauge 9 30 seconds. And with that one, as you can see, I was able to pop a couple of, of rings in each section. Okay, so that's uh, what we're looking at doing now. It's a really high aspect ratio weave. Um, 
which means generally most of these ring sizes aren't ones that we normally stock um, because a high, aspect ratio, a high aspect ratio rings tend to be weak. Um, so there is a little bit of fiddling around with these ones. Um, but I just love the weave, so um, I think it's, you know, it's one of those ones where I'll put up with the terrible rings to make a great looking weave. It becomes quite uh, dense once you get it together, so the high aspect ratio um, doesn't affect it too much. Alright, so we're going to be weaving this in the 14 gauge, the nice big chunky version, so that you guys can see it. And uh, we'll get started. Okay, so we need to start off with a simple 2, 2 and 2 chain. We're going to start making uh, full Persian basically. So if you don't have that chain put up, put together, whip that up now. So just 2, 2 and 2. Okay, I'll grab my pliers. All right, so as I said, we're just going to start off by making um, some a piece of full Persian to start with. So just fold back the top pair of your wires until you get a couple of uh, segments in. This is quite loose and, and unstable, so it is a little fiddly in that regard. So fold your end pair of rings back like you would with Byzantine and feed one ring through the rings that you've just folded back. Okay, and close that up. Now, as I said, the high aspect ratio rings can take a little bit more um, effort to close properly. So there's one, and we repeat that with a second ring. Takes a little bit more fiddling around, I find, because they're quite springy. Okay, so there's the second ring. Okay, so our work should look like this. Okay, then we grab another another ring. Now I just feed that through the top ring there and bring it back and take it through those two V. That's just the way I've always done full Persian. The other way of doing it is just you can put it through these two here through the V. Oops, As you can see I'm not used to doing it this way. Straight through the V and then continue around through those two rings that we just added. Whatever way works for you. So once you get that ring in position, we can close that up. So these are a bit fiddly. There we go. Okay. So that's the ring we just placed there, and we need to pop one on the other side. Okay, so through those two rings, through the two V's that have opened that open up to the top of the weave there, and close that up. I'm really happy with that. Okay. So basically there we've got a piece of full Persian. That's what we're aiming for. Okay, now our next step is we grab that segment of full Persian that we've made and we squish it a little bit, making sure that the top rings are going from left to right upwards. And then we're going to feed an open ring through the second of that ring pair, down through this pair here. I'll show you that with the ring. 
So we want it to go through second of the top pair of rings and the first of the second pair of rings, bringing it all the way around, doing the same on the other side. Okay, and close that up. And we need to place a second ring into the same positioning. So down through these two sides, bringing it all the way around, up through the other two on the other side, so that it looks like that. So you can see it's coming down through the second ring in the pair, the top pair, the first ring in the pair underneath. And then we go around and we do this other rings in the pair on the other side. Okay, and once we've got that in place, we close it up. And our work looks like this. So at this stage it's still a bit loose, doesn't start tightening up until we've got a couple of segments in place. Okay, so what we want to do next once we've got those two rings, is take up another open ring and we want to feed it through the two rings in the middle there. So if we pull the top pair apart, we want it to go through the pair of rings in the middle. Just like that. And we close that ring up. And we close that and we put a second ring in the same place. So through the two rings in the middle and close it up. Okay, so you've got two rings there. And we want to now form um, another Persian unit. To do that, we take up an open ring and we feed it through two rings we just added and then through those two rings in the bottom in the unit below. You can see that there. And we close that up. Okay. So it looks like that. We flip our work over to the other side. We do the same on the other side. So through the two rings on the top and then down through the two rings in the piece below. And we close that up. Okay. So we've got our full Persian in there now. And we want to again close the, squish the, the rings, positioning it from these top pair left up and right. And we take it uh, open ring and we want to put it through the second ring here on the first pair, the top pair, the first ring on the pair underneath, bringing it around to the other side making it go through the opposite rings on the pair. You can see that. Okay, and we close that up.
and we had a second ring in the same spot. So through those two rings there on the side, bringing it all the way around and going through the rings on the other side. And then we close it up. I said a little patience, a little bit of patience is needed with these high aspect rings. They do fight the nice closures. That's why I don't tend to use them. There we go, that's a bit better. Okay, so that's what our work currently looks like, and that's pretty much it all the way through. So at this stage, we will take an open ring, we're going to build another Persian unit, we're going to take that open ring and put it through a pair of rings in the middle. And close that up. And we had a second ring in the same place. two rings in there now and to keep building our unit go through those two rings that we just added bringing your ring down around going through two rings in the unit below and we'll close that Um, no, Ace, it's actually difficult to get it around properly when you've got um, a long length. Okay, so through the two unit, two rings that we added at the top, bringing it down through the two rings that form the V in the bottom unit and closing it up. There we go. So that's our Persian unit in place. And we now just want to put the orbiting rings in. So again, giving it a little squeeze, making sure that the topmost pair go from left to right up. And we pop it through the second with the top pair of rings through, sorry, and the first of the bottom pair, bringing it around and going through the opposite rings on the other side. What part are you having trouble understanding, Dawn? Christina, you cracked me up. You're doing it because it's uh, making sense to you. Okay, so we close that up and we pop another ring in there. Okay, so down through the second and the first of the pair and then back up again on the other side. So your work looks like that. Which bit to put the worm bit in? So you're talking about the orbiting, orbiting rings, these two rings here.
Okay, so through the middle pair to start building the next Persian unit. Uh, Margaret, I did show a couple of weaves with the different colour rings. It depends um, on the size that you do. We don't have any large AA for the 14 gauge. I'll show it to you later, basically. All right, let me just build up another unit, Dawn, and um, I'll show you again. Okay, so just building the Persian putting it through those two rings we just had, bringing it down, going through two rings in the previous unit, closing it up. Okay, and doing the same for the other side. All right, so Dawn, we want to hold it. So these are our top pair of rings here. And we want those to be going left to right, up from bottom left, top right. Okay, and then we want to take Sorry, I don't have my all. Um, we're in the middle of redoing our office and I haven't found where I've hidden my all yet. So I can't sort of separate this out properly for you. But you need to go down through the second ring of that top pair and down through that ring directly underneath it. So we go... down through here. You can see we've picked up the second of the top pair and the first of the pair underneath. And then when you bring that ring naturally around, you bring it, go it through the opposite on the other side. So the rings that you haven't already gone through are the rings that you go through on the other side. If you're keeping it squashed, those rings should be obvious to you. If you let it go, then you might lose which ones it's up to. And then you just close that up. Does that make sense? Okay, and we'll place the second one. So through these are our top two pair, so we're going to go through the second, down through the one directly underneath it, bringing it around and up through the other rings that make up the pair. So you only go through each ring once. So you do down in between the top two rings and come out between bottom two rings. Not sure what you're saying there Tamara. You're talking about the orbital? All right, I'm going to have to prepare some more rings. So creating the Persian unit through our middle rings, pop two in there. So 
we're just creating our Persian. And again on the other side. Okay. All right, so again, doing the orbiting rings. Take your work, squish it a little bit to help you see where your rings need to go. Making sure that your top pair of rings go from bottom left up to top right, as you can see here. And we want to put this ring, our first ring, in between the top pair. Okay, they go straight through the top pair and then through to the ring, the first of the rings underneath, the first pair, the first of the pair underneath. Can we see that? Does that make sense? So we pop it in there and then we bring it around and we go through the other two rings on the other side that form the pairs. Okay. And we close that up and in this case we double it up. We do all of that again through the exact same spot as the previous ring. Okay. And our work looks like that. Okay. All right, so we'll give away a copy of the tutorial tonight. As usual, I haven't come prepared with a question, so I've been trying to uh, rack my brain for the last 10 minutes and clue Chris into asking a question, but he just stared at me with a blank look on his face. Um, so let me see, what can we do? Let's go with, um, I don't know, let's say on Facebook, what is the emoji you find yourself using the most? I can't think of anything better. So is it the like, is it the heart, is it the laughy person, the wow person, the sad person or the angry person? Which one do you find yourself using the most on Facebook? Comment uh, which one of those um, while our session is live and we will get a copy of the PDF out to you um, in the next few days. Only while the session is live, guys. Of course... Uh, those of you that already have a copy because of the um, being in the mailers club, uh, feel free to comment away. Just because you've already got a copy of the tutorial doesn't mean you can't play along. Okay, so is everybody happy with this or do you want me to weave up a couple of more units? Tell me how you're feeling. Okay, so just to go over the sizes again for those that popped in a little bit late. Okay, so the 14 gauge, of course, is the one I've been dealing with. Um, and that's using the 7 sixteenths, which is 11.11 .11 in your metric sizes. So if you've got around about the 11, you should be fine. Um, I wouldn't go any looser than that. That's quite quite loose and, and very flexible as you can see. Okay, we weren't able to do that in colour because we just don't have colour rings that size. Okay, the next size is the 16 gauge which we used the 5 sixteenths. So 16 gauge being 1.2 mil, 5 sixteenths is uh, 7.94 in metric so around about an 8 mil ring. Um, 
we can only do the BA in the double because we don't stock a 16 gauge 5 16 what we do stock in the colour though is 14 gauge 5 16 so we were able to pop one of those rings one of the orbiting rings in there isn't enough space in there to put two orbiting rings in in that colour so if you want to do colour in the 16 gauge just the one orbiting ring the 18 gauge uh, we chose 7 mils and if you work in metric that's about a 9.30 seconds that's it with uh, the double BA rings what we were able to do to introduce a bit of colour to this one was to make the orbiting rings 16 gauge 9.30 seconds so that actually still allowed us to pop in two of the orbiting rings in colour Now I don't have a 20 gauge version done for you quite simply because I just actually don't even have any of the ring sizes that you need cut. You would need about a 20 gauge 5.5 and again you won't be able to incorporate any colour into um, that size. So there's pretty much just the two sizes that you can incorporate our current AA sizes into. Your 18 gauge using the 16 gauge 930 seconds AA and your 16 gauge but using 14 gauge 5 sixteenths but you only get the one in. Okay all right I'm a little bit cons uh, confused Leanne about your question about you've done the worm now what? Um, I'm not sure what everybody's calling a worm I'm assuming it's the orbiting rings. Um, you just keep building on. I'm not sure what you're asking there. So I'm assuming you're up to putting the orbiting bit in. You've already done all of that. So what you want to do next is just build your Persian unit again. Okay, and to do that, we pop an open ring through the middle pair of rings, the ones in the center there and we close that up so we want two in there okay and then we just want to place a second open ring put it through the two rings that we just placed and bring it down through the two rings in the unit below okay close that up fiddle around with the closure okay and we want to do the same on the other side of your weave So if you don't want to go in from the top like I've been doing because that's just the way I'm used to, you bring it through the two rings in the bottom here and the unit below that create that V, an open V, and continue it up through the two rings on top and close that up. Okay, that's a Persian unit there. and then you add your orbiting and to do the orbiting which I think everybody hopefully now has got so down through the second ring of the top pair and the first ring of the bottom pair, bringing it all the way around and bringing it up to the other through the other pair of rings on the other side and closing that up can you put up the link Chris 
to the aspect ratio from our blog yeah, for Margaret. Yeah. Margaret, we've got a, a small um, item in our blog about aspect ratio. Chris will put the link up for you. Um, and if you click on that, that'll help explain aspect ratio and the formulas that you need to use to work it out. So placing the second of our orbiting rings. Uh -huh. My really high aspect ratio rings drive me insane, but there we go. Nice weave. So that's it. The tutorial will show you how to finish the weave off. So um, I won't bother doing that now, but um, once you get your hands on the tutorial and we'll get that out to you the next couple of days, uh, it'll show you how to fi uh, finish it off and add the clasps. I've listed the ring sizes a couple of times now, Hazel. Just go back further in the video and you'll be able to hear what ring sizes the colour rings were. Okay, so is everybody happy with that? I know a few people were having a trouble with the Persian part of it. Dawn, you're okay with it now? <laughs> All right, I'm going to take that as a yes. No one's making any comments, so um, I find from home for the books. I did actually, Bonnie, I'll show you. I'll switch over to my webcam and I'll show you where my books are. Okay, so can you see behind me? I found a perfect home for my books. <laughs> <laughs> so unfortunately I don't need to uh, I don't need to send any out to you. Sorry, Lal. They've found they've found a perfect spot. Okay. Alright, well that's it. Um hopefully if um you all got something out of that. If not, um as you know the video gets saved. On Facebook and you'll be able to go back and replay it again. Yeah, sorry Bonnie. I'm a, I'm a little attached to my books and if I gave them all away I think um, Chris might um, get all frowny face at me. <laughs> He's pulling faces at me right now. Thank you Joe. I'm sort of kind of happy. The colour's not showing through properly. It's actually um, violet and red and it looks I don't know it looks brown on my screen at the moment so I've got violet underneath and a little bit of red and stuff on top but um, yeah the colors not showing showing through all that well all right lovely people thank you so much for coming and joining us tonight a little bit longer than normal um, a little bit of drama this week getting the subscri subscribers kits out to everybody um, Unfortunately, we had one person who missed out, but um, generally they got out to everyone. If you want to sign up for the August kits, you've still got some time to do that. Uh, pop onto the website and uh, check out the Mailers Club link and you know, for the details on how to sign up for those that haven't done that or, or um, are interested in doing it. And I think that's about it. So for those that commented in the um, session, we'll send that um, tutorial out to you probably by about Tuesday. Wednesday we'll have the new Weave up um, as an event on our Facebook page. And the members of the Saturday Night Mail Club will, of course, get their copy of the tutorial early. And, um, and we'll meet up next Saturday. Okay. So if everybody is cool, I'm getting the thumbs up from Chris, so everything must be good. All right, guys, thank you very much. Um, any problems, um, you know, ask some questions, especially in the Aussie Mailers group. Uh, any finished pieces, throw them up there. We'd love to see what people are doing. All right, fantastic, guys. Thanks very much, and I will catch up with you next week. Bye.